on. Fish on the Yozurian. He is taking line. Wow. He's just ripping off drag. Yeah, Jamie. This is that Yozuri L minnow. I've got hundreds of trout on these things. They are, they are the real deal. That's for sure. Heading out into deeper water here. As I always say, maneuvering is critical when you're fishing out of a kayak. I can see the top shot there. Ooh. That tip down in the water, he wants to jump. I don't want him jumping around. I haven't even seen him yet. He's not very far away. Oh, right there, right there, in the bag. Woo! Dang, that's a beaut. That's a big fish. That's a big old rainbow. Off the hook, too. Good thing I kept the line tight. <laughs> or as tight as possible, anyway. This down here, get this plug, get this plug out of the way. Nice thing about the rubber net, you're not gonna damage the fish. Get that thing over there out of the way. Wow. Wow, you gotta see this fish. He's a dandy, this is a four pounder here. You hold this guy up, we'll get him revived and we'll get him out of here. Look at that, right up on shore. Big old planted rainbow, Mount Lassen trout, just phenomenal. And uh, what a strike, what a run. He ran, I don't know, 15, 20 seconds of just steady drag, drag screaming power. Um, let's get him back in the water here. We'll get him, get him revived and get him, uh, get him back on his way. Howdy guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Cal Kellogg and this is my kayak trout fishing gear right here. We are gonna talk trout fishing gear in just a second but uh, I wanna give you a, an example here that's gonna relate right back to trout fishing. I wanna think about two really successful baseball players, guys that were really successful at hitting the ball. Ted Williams, Joe DiMaggio. Ted Williams, he took a very complex approach to hitting a baseball. A lot of science, a lot of thought, a, a, a lot of philosophy went into his approach. He was very successful, okay? Joe DiMaggio, his approach was much simpler. He advocated getting up to the plate, getting into a comfortable stance, and I'm quoting him, look for something white and hit it. That's what he was up there to do. Get in a comfortable stance and put the bat on the ball. Very successful hitter. The point here is, is that you can take a sport and you can make it as complicated as you want, or you can make it as simple as you want, and you can be successful, okay? When it comes to trout fishing, I try to take a simple approach. I like to keep things simple. You've heard me say that before if you're a fan of the channel, but I, I still like to have enough gear to cover every scenario I'm likely to encounter out on the water. And excuse any background noise you hear, it is Saturday and people are out doing chores and stuff like that. So over the past week, I've spent a lot of time going over my kayaking gear because Lucy and I, we're getting ready to go on the road and we're gonna hit a bunch of different lakes. We're gonna be chasing trout, um, brown trout, cutthroats, rainbows, you name it. We're gonna be traveling across Northern California and beyond and we're gonna be chasing trout. So I wanted to get my gear dialed in. And in doing that and going through that process, the, the idea you know, came to me that my tackle can be broken down really into six categories and that's what we're going to talk about today if you want an in-depth uh in-depth gear list of what i'm carrying i'm going to post that up on the fishhuntshoot.com website and i will put a link down below if you want to check out a complete comprehensive list of what i'm carrying but let's start off with the basic foundation of everything that is my rigging kit. Now I pre-rig a lot of stuff, but I have to have everything I need right here in this box um, for, for creating tackle out on the water in the kayak. And I have everything in here from, you know, trolling swivels like that. I have a bunch of beads, action discs, trolling swivels, slow death hooks, of course. Um, treble hooks, two sizes, sixes and eights. Um, I have some number four bronze mustads. I have some number six bronze mustads. 
I have a whole bunch of mini turbos. I can build all kinds of things with those worm spinners. I can add a spinner to a fly. I can build kokanee gear, whatever, you name it. I've got all that. And I even have some, some octopus hooks here. If I want to fish bait, whoop, dropped one of them. If I want to build some kokanee leaders, whatever, I'm prepared for that. And last but not least, I have some bobber stops right there. A lot of guys ask me, what is a bobber stop? Well, they're little rubber football shaped things and they're, they're uh, kind of put on these, these wire. They're kind of, you can see there's a loop in it. It enables you to slide them on your line. So bobber stops, they're useful for a, a thousand and one different applications, but basically they allow you to peg different things on your line, whether it be a bobber or a turbo or whatever it is. So that's about it for the rigging kit. Um, I just have a variety of hardware in here that's gonna help get me through any situation I encounter on the water, whether it's a broken trolling rod, a broken line that I have to re-rig with a trolling swivel, or if I have to build a kokanee spinner or anything in between, my rigging box is gonna help me get that done. So we'll set that aside there. Now getting into the nuts and bolts of my approach, there are two basic categories of lures I employ for covering water for aggressive fishing, and they are both in this box right here. This is a double-sided double screw and nail box that I got at Home Depot. I have two of these on the kayak, and I do have these tethered. Um, you sit right aside of me. On this side of the box, it is full of spoons, all kinds of spoons. Um, for the fast stuff, you know, I have a solid selection of speed spoons in a variety of colors over here i have more speed spoons I, notice i have those pinned on a section of pool floaty such that they don't get all tangled up so have an ample selection of speed spoons get those back in there i have a collection of crippled minnow rolling spoons i have some really large trigger spoon magnums for you know lakes that have really large trout then moving down inside in size rather i have my standard size trigger spoons there i have a I have a couple of floaties full of those here's another one here standard size triggers and i have them in my other box i guess i have a bunch of trigger spoon juniors and i have a bunch of pinhead spoons now what this selection of spoons enables me to do is to employ my basic trolling philosophy fast to slow large to small i want to start off fast and aggressive slow down as i have to slow down and as i slow down i'm going to start dropping down in spoon size and that's exactly what this is set up for i can start off with the speed spoons or the rolling triple minnows or both cover a bunch of ground then i can drop down to trigger spoons then to trigger spoon juniors and pinheads then down to my micro trigger spoons and that's going to take me from fast to slow from large to small enough said spoons extremely versatile and i have all the kind of colors you can imagine from metallics to bright painted models to minnow finish models uv non-uv it's all in here so let's close that side now we're going to go over to the other side of the box make sure that's that's properly secured. I don't want to have an accident. On the other side of the box, that's where I keep my plugs. Let's talk a little bit about plugs. I love plugs. There, there's a, a lot of guys don't think I like Rapalas and stuff. I like them. I just use other lures more often, but I love my Rapalas. The thing to know about my plugs, one, is that I have the, the large to small philosophy going on, but I also have some sinkers and some floaters. The reason I have sinkers like, like this Countdown Rapala and this Yozuri Elmino right here is sometimes I like to stop and fan cast. And I just find that the sinking baits, they cast better and I can work the water column more effectively. I can start to retrieve right when it hits the water, bring it in near the surface, or I can count it down, you know, 15, 18 feet, just depending on what the situation calls for. So I have Yozuri's and, uh, and Rapala's in a variety of countdown models. Here's some more over here. There's that iconic uh, Fire Tiger Rapala, some rainbow pattern Yozuri Elminos right there. 
I have some smaller L minnows. These are uh, also countdown baits, very effective. I like those at small compact size. Those work great sometimes. Um, a whole bunch of floating Rapalas right there. Larger floating Rapalas right here. Get these guys back in here where they go. And uh, you've heard me talk about these a bunch of times. A big selection of, um, I lost my, I lost my train of thought. Thought, the Yakima Maglip. Sorry about that guys, Yakima Maglip. I have those in a variety of sizes. That's the 3.0 right there. That's the largest one I'm carrying. Here's the, uh, the 2.0 right here. Okay, so those are very versatile. They, they have a tremendous action at slow speeds and you control them fast too, and they dive pretty well. That little guy, that's gonna get you down about eight feet. That larger guy, that's gonna get you down all the way to 12 feet or more. So those have become really staples for me in the plug category. And of course, I'm fishing out of the kayak, so I can slow way down if I want to. I have some standard fare flatfish. Now you can't troll these much above 1.2, 1.3. But if you're looking for something that you really want to keep in the strike zone, that little gold guy right there has been money for me in the high Sierras. If you're looking for something you want to keep in the strike zone while having maximum flash and maximum vibration, it's hard to beat an old school flatfish. But that's really about it. Over here in my, my huge plug category, I've got a big countdown Rapala and I've got a jointed Rapala. I might throw in a few more large plugs in there. I have room in that compartment. But that's all I have in the, in the plug category. In terms of colors, it's a lot like my spoon selection, you know? I have metallics all the way through bright stuff. So, you know, bait fish patterns through, you know, the oranges, the chartreuses, the really bright and bold stuff. I think it's important in your metallics, both on the spoon side and on the plug side, to have some silvers and have some golds. Um, and, you know, it's hard to find plugs in copper color. I always have some copper color spoons because they can be money. If I could find copper colored plugs, I'd have some of those too. So that's pretty much it for the plugs and that's pretty much it for tackle box number one. Oh, last thing I do have in here, I have some of my speed shad. Great lure for casting or trolling. Got to work them fast. They're great for casting because you can count them down. You can vary that retrieve lots of vibration lots of flash and it has that great you know shad profile so we've caught some very large trout on those definitely a big fish bait so i have i guess i have four of those in here so that's it for the plugs and that's it for this particular box close that up now here is my other two-sided box this side is all flies but let's talk about this side first over here I've got a few more spoons. This is where I have some of my smaller spoons. I have my um, my micro triggers right there. Great spoon when the going's tough, when I want to slow down to 1.8, 1.5, something like that. I'll run these. Often I'll run these when I'm running, say, a worm or something on one rod, and I'll run this right below the surface chop. Great Sierra baits. I have those in gold, chrome, and orange. Just a, a pretty simple color selection, but a very effective spoon. And then over here, I have just a, a crazy selection of Trigger Spoon Juniors in every color combination you can imagine. The metallics, the bright colors. I've got some I've added prismatic tape to. I love that spoon. And I probably have 30 of those Trigger Spoon Juniors in here. So got a whole bunch of those and I use those a lot. Down here, I have a floaty with some spinners, some of my trolling spinners. I'll cast them, I'll troll them. It's good to have a spinner. Sometimes when the trout are aggressive, they just jump all over a spinner. They love spinners. And uh, here's the only spoon in my tackle box that I don't manufacture myself. What would a trout fishing tackle box be without a selection of cast masters? You can cast them, you can troll them, you can jig them. They're money, you've got them, I've got them. If you don't have cast masters, you need to get some cast masters. I got that one all tangled up there. There we go. Now, in the center of this box, you can see these two compartments right here. Got the pool floaty in there. I don't have these totally populated yet. This is where I keep my pre-tied leaders. Everything from trolling leaders 
to leaders rigged with you know uh, mini turbos stuff like that I'll have leaders rigged with flies in here but that is where I'm gonna keep my pre-rigged leaders I have them on the pool floaty convenient easy if it falls in the water it'll float till I get back there to pick it up bright I can see it well on the water um, and cost nothing so I go through a lot of pool floaties so that that is the leader and small spoon side of that box the other side this is the side I really really love because this is where my large flies are stowed and let me open it up flies you know the more I fish flies the more big fish I catch on them the more fish I catch on them across the board troll them slow troll them fast it doesn't matter team them with an action disc fish them give them a chance and they are going to be one of your very favorite big fish lures um, but I've just got all manner of flies. I've got metal heads. I've got magnum metal heads. Um, I've got, you know, trolling streamers, bait fish patterns like that. Got this one the other day. I'm all excited about it. It is a, uh, for you guys that like running the Perch Rapala, that's my answer to the Perch Rapala right there. I've got Mickey Finn colors. And of course, you know me. I've got a lot of orange flies. So, so this side of the box, this is where I have all my, my large flies. Again, you see the common thread. The philosophy ranges from pure bait fish colors like that to very bright colored stuff like that and everything in between. I can go subtle. I can go aggressively, you know, in terms of colors. I have black flies for low light periods. I have white flies for lakes that have pond smell or thread fin shad. Um, I have whites and blues for lakes where the forage is pond smell, small kokanee, whatever. I've just got all my bases covered in terms of color. Um, these are all my large flies. And I do have an additional box where I've got a lot of small stuff right here. This box this is just one of our little compartment boxes here. Um, in this one, I've got a solid selection of the junior trolling flies, lots of woolly boogers in lots of different colors. Um, I've got some small, you know, marabou streamers like those. Of course, I've got a whole bunch of black woolly boogers right there. That is just a, a money bait and, you know, more junior trolling flies right there. So this is more the small stuff, the finesse stuff. I've got some white woolly boogers, which produced dozens and dozens of fish for me at Collins Lake this year and not just trout I caught a bunch of crappie and bass on those as well so you know just some smaller flies here woolly boogers um, junior trolling flies stuff like that so now we're down to the final box where is it it's way over here down to the final box and this is where I keep my soft plastics on this side and my hardware on this side. I don't have any minnow tubes in here at this point. I'm gonna add some minnow tubes, but I have a solid selection of grubs, everything from glow white to bright, bright pink. You saw me pull this a lot at Collins Lake when I was guiding. Of course, I've got the minnow pattern, the firecracker. I've got the darker stuff, you know, smoke and green. I've got some purple, which, uh, which is a real sleeper in terms of trout bait. Everybody knows about a purple, you know, plastic worm or a purple grub for bath. They work for trout too. So I've got those, rig those on a slow death hook, troll them anywhere from 1.5 all the way up to 2.5 or beyond. Absolute money bait. And uh, of course I'm gonna have some scent on the kayak to scent up those soft plastics. Very important to use scent with the soft plastics. Um, over here, trout tricks all day long i've got the trout tricks worms i've got them in six different colors um bubble gum <clears throat> neon pink chartreuse brown white and orange and uh, all the colors work some work better than others at different times um i'll team these with a dodger i'll team them with a wiggle disc i'll play with them very effective offering for trout of all sizes we had trout up to about eight eight and a half pounds on the trout tricks at Collins Lake, but we also had a ton of pan size rainbows on that, on that lure. Slim profile, something they don't see very often. Last side of the box, and this is element number five in terms of my tackle. This is where I have my attractors stowed. I have a bunch of rigged turbo flashers. I've got colored, you know, 
bright colored ones like that. I've got the chromes. I'm gonna add a few more in there, but those are rigged on a piece of fluorocarbon line, swivel on the front, snap swivel on the back. I could put a grub behind that, a spoon behind that, a rigged worm behind that. I could put whatever I want behind that. Tons of flash, tons of vibration, calls trout from long distances, absolute money in the high Sierra, but it's a killer down in the foothill lakes too. Now, in terms of Dodgers, I start out up here at this end, I've got some six inch blades. There's a, there's a chrome on chrome, mainstay, watermelon, moon crackle tape. And then I've got some bright colored ones. I've got, looks like I've got a pink here, one of my fish eyes and a orange fish eye. So those are my six inch fish eyes. Right next door to those, right next door to those, I've got my mini willow leaves, a solid selection of the mini willows. Underneath those, I have some trolling rudders. I use those when I run the crippled minnow, whenever I'm rolling anything that, that has a spin to it that I think is gonna put twist in my line if I'm gonna troll a spinner. You gotta have the, um, the rudder moving across the box, four inch fish eyes right here. I've got some fish eye pros. I've got some standard fish eyes in bright colors orange, chartreuse, pink, stuff like that. Last but not least, these are my three inch blades. These are my uh, Sierra Diamondbacks and whoa, and my Sidewinders. And I also have a few of my, let me grab one here, a few of my fisheye flashers in here. This isn't a Dodger, this is a flasher. It spins through the water can team them with a minnow tube, with a fly, with a threaded worm. It's just something different. They don't hear that a lot. This is more of a salmon style bait. It rotates, it puts off a ton of sound, a ton of flash, show them something they haven't seen before, and you're likely to get some attention from the fish. So that's about it for my attractors. That was uh, kind of kind of area five of my lure selection. Area six is right here. I never go trout fishing without them. Natural bait, night crawlers. If I'm going either to the foothills or the high Sierras, I'm always gonna have night crawlers. And sometimes when I go to the foothill baits or lakes, I'm gonna have some thread fin shad and or some tray bait anchovies or at least strips of anchovy that I can tip, you know, grubs, tubes, even flies and spoons with. So that's about it. Pretty simple, six different categories natural bait, spoons, plugs, soft plastics, flies, and your attractors, dodgers and flashers. So those are your six categories. Let me go over that one time, one more time, make sure I didn't, didn't mess that up. Spoons, plugs, flies, soft plastics, natural baits, and your attractors, your flashers, and your dodgers. If you're looking for, uh, if you want to see a complete list of, of my tackle, go on over to fishhuntshoot.com, look in our editorial section, I'll link that down below, and you will be able to peruse a complete list of what I'm carrying in the kayak this year. Beyond that, I've been going on for a while. Thanks a ton, guys. I'll catch you next time right here on YouTube. I'm Kel Kellogg, and I wish you ultimate success out on the water this summer.